Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Chase. Uh, so today we're going to look at Bitcoin, Ethereum, and ES. Uh, but we're going to start off the video with some alpha, alright? Unless you're a super experienced trader, uh, I'm very certain that this part of the video is going to be very helpful for you. Uh, I'm so confident, in fact, that if not, and especially if you're a new viewer, if not, uh, I invite you to unfollow me on all platforms, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I'm pretty confident that you're going to um, be content with what you learn right now. So we're going right to this tweet. Uh, and it says one or two entry techniques is all you truly need. Spend the rest of your time trying to understand these concepts. Context slash trend, which for me is market structure. Uh, that's how you understand it. And how to choose your invalidation, which you want to avoid liquidity pools. And then how to choose your targets, which is typically a support and resistance or a liquidity pool. Okay, uh, so we are going to use F as an example here. And just to show you that I didn't cherry pick any specific area or anything, I invite you to go back and look at my tweets from either May 1st or from April 30th and I had drawn out this area of the liquidity sweep uh, and you can find it in both uh, the video uh, I'm not sure why that switched but in both the video and the uh, the tweet from it was May 1st and April 30th I have no idea why that just reloaded on its own anyway moving forward um, so as I said you don't really need a ton of entry techniques in order to do well in this market a lot of people are overlooking uh, contextual, right? So the context here, if we go down to this, let's say like a four hour real quick, uh, and we can see the market structure was constantly higher highs, higher lows, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, break in market structure, okay? So we're now bearish context, okay? That's the first thing. We're looking at this, we know number one, we're bearish context, teaching you a little bit about that. But now back to the entry techniques, all right? So now we're looking for a short because we're bearish context. And here's what I'm gonna say. I don't care if you do, if you play liquidity sweeps, okay? Okay, there's a liquidity sweep. I don't care if you do fair value gaps, okay? There's a fair value gap. I don't care if you were gonna do, uh, let's go up to say like the weekly, and if you do ranges and you do range high, deviation retest of the range high okay there's a third entry technique uh, and I'm sure if you brought other people into this video uh, you know you would have you know CBS saying he could find an RSI divergence in here um, you could find you know you could have Pierre come in and say uh, that he he sees a cross of moving averages in here uh, the point is you could find a hundred different entry techniques in here yet all that mattered was that you shorted in here you put your stop above here and you targeted liquidity okay so now let's go to uh, now that I showed you that but let's go to points two and three so how to choose invalidation by avoiding liquidity pools well the liquidity here and uh, this is sort of a pet peeve of mine lately is that everyone just refers to everything as liquidity uh, but nonetheless we'll go over that another time when you have all this consolidation in here uh, your liquidity is here. This is the relative high, or, you know, the high that everybody sees. This is where your liquidity is. It's not. It's not here. It's not here. There could be more up here, right? After after you take out all these highs, there could have been more. But since we were in a bearish structure, we were looking for any type of retracement to get short. Oh, by the way, another entry technique. You probably could have fibbed this to like the 0.6. Yep, there you go. 618 fib. Um, th there's just so many entry techniques, but it doesn't really matter. So. Picking your invalidation. You want to pick your invalidation based off of typically a support and resistance. You don't want to put your stop up here at liquidity because then you could be a part of the liquidity pool if it continues to push up, you'll get slippage, etc., etc. But what you do here is you short the liquidity sweep or you short the fair value gap or whatever you want, right? Again, entry techniques. You're going to put your stop above the leg that formed the big down move. This is your support and resistance area right here. You put your stop right, you know, in here-ish or right here, right around there. Okay, there's your invalidation. It's as simple as that. Put your stops not above or below wicks, but your stops wants to, your stops want to typically be above or below obvious support and resistances that caused price to move in one direction or another. Excuse me. If you have a consolidation and price moves up, and you're looking to buy the retest of long to go higher, your stop is gonna be below the consolidation. It's not gonna be below the wick of the consolidation, right? So let's redraw this and let's say it looked like this. 
and it looked like that and then it goes and you're trying to buy the retest okay you're not putting your stop down here because then your liquidity you're putting your stop here because it's below the consolidation that sent you up if you happen to come back down this support should hold and continue to move upwards okay so that's how you choose your stops and your invalidation below above support and resistance strong support and resistance not not just random support and resistance make sure that the support and resistance you're choosing actually prompted strong displacement in one way or another look at this strong displacement that's your support and resistance okay uh, targets targets you typically want to choose either support and resistance on the other side or you want to choose a liquidity level um, so let's just use our replay tool just to get back to uh, where the entry began so the entry began here and this would be your liquidity sweep and now you're looking for targets so what I would be thinking is I would be thinking well you have a pretty obvious support level locally here so this could be like your target one uh, and then it looks like you have a support level here that could be your target two and then if you were going all the way you would say okay liquidity down here below these lows this low this low. now you would say oh well, why not why not these lows well because these lows in my opinion were already used as liquidity from here so this was your low swept liquidity 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 retest of support right after sweeping liquidity so if this is going to go this should go to this fresh liquidity and there it is boom fresh liquidity uh, when price does come down you see a little bounce off of this sr for tp1 uh, you saw a little bounce off of this one the second for tp2 and then tp3 all the way here and you would do something like 40 percent 30 percent 30 percent and that's your total position size uh, and profits taken okay um, so that should give you a firm understanding of that you only really need one or two entry techniques because that's all you needed to catch this like i said you know you could have caught it with anything could have caught it with fair value could have caught it with liquidity could have caught it with a range could have caught it with moving averages it could have caught it with a hundred things i'm sure i'm sure there's a lot more um, but that's all you need it could have caught it with local market structure could have caught it with a fib um, then you needed to know where to put your stops and where to put your targets okay and once you have that oh in the context the context is key context is one of the biggest things so make sure you're trading in the direction of the context people were asking me about my six criterias uh, for trading it's not necessarily something I, I want to give away right you put your edge out there it's like you've been working on it for so long but I can say this if you're trading contextually right we want to be in the direction of the trend is the is the trade in the direction of the trend is the trade you know is the context correct for the trade if this is bearish structure we should be looking for shorts you know do you have a clean a clear entry technique do you have a clear target there's three out of the six you know there, there's three more but that is a very good starting point that I'm giving you more than enough trust me I sometimes wonder if I don't even need all six and I should just break it down to the three okay um, so that covers that we covered context trend we covered how to choose invalidation and how to choose SR uh, make sure you go like and retweet this video right now on Twitter give it a thumbs up all that uh, I think this is some serious you know alpha for you guys and uh, hopefully you know let's get it out there let's let's spread it because the amount of people I see just uh, you know following just accounts that are complete LARP dog shit uh, it, it would be nice to you know at the end of the day um, you know all these videos and whatnot you know they're sponsored by Prime and stuff and I'm, I'm trying to make money for myself too but at the end of the day I do have a genuine passion to try to get people on the right path rather than what I see some of the garbage on this website it's just like a lot of it is just garbage and I feel like people are just constantly pushed down the wrong path and that's why they're all getting liquidated and people disappear every year and uh, I've been here since 2017 never you know never lost at all still here still going up still improving still learning uh, but yeah that's what I try to pass down to you guys all right let's take a sip of water here so don't really uh yeah I, I just made these video charts because i get annoyed that every single time i um every single time i do a video i end up like losing my original charts um see so yeah, let's just we'll use this uh here's how i had it drawn out right uh, i went to the weekly uh and i see okay liquidity sweep here uh support and resistance here right so 
resistance here, resistance here, resistance here, big move through, comes back, support and resistance, okay? And then I also had liquidity marked out up here, right? Um, so you see that, and then I put a range in the middle of this. Now I'm just gonna backtrack and go to what I had. So there you go, the, uh, the low, the high, the equilibrium. You have local liquidity down here. Uh, this was a short-term area I was watching. Uh, let's see, so we're still waiting on a four-hour close below here, right? So uh, we had this low, sweep, 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 sweep. Uh, still three hours on this candle, we'll see what happens. Um, one hour was not to be trusted because we saw uh, really, you know, I, I wouldn't be shorting on the first break of this anyway, right? Because liquidity, first break, and then you end up getting like a triple tap scenario uh, like this. Deviation, there you go, sort of your triple tap, and it moves up, takes these equal highs out. Now we're moving down. Uh, could be, could, sort of is looking bearish, I would say. Uh, but I would want to wait for a four-hour close below here. And then let's see, maybe a retest of this area. Displacement. Um, at that point, you know, you can have your, you could take a short off of here, stop up here, uh, but at the same time, you know, it's tough to play counter trend here, in my opinion. I would most likely wait for the retest, displacement, and then try to look for any type of retracement into market structure break or fair value or anything like that uh, to play to the liquidity low. Okay, that is how I would look at that for the short term. Um, Outside of that, you know, more more high time frame stuff uh, because I believe that's what the videos are easier to work with. Um, when you get really low time frame, you know, it's uh, a lot of this stuff can change, right? Um, you know, you have to sort of have the you have to have you have to be ready for new data. And I feel like a lot of people I put these videos out. If I do low time frame stuff, they're not ready for new data, and uh, this will come up. You know, let's just pretend this will come up and, you know, go above here or something. And they'll say, oh, well, do, do you still want to long this sweep uh, after taking 32? Uh, not really. I'd probably want to look down for a stronger retracement. Uh, but, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see it as time comes. So, anyway, liquidity below here. Potential sweep here could look for long. Um, outside of that, if we're going to continue to move down, I genuinely think that like this 28.2 to 28.5 area is what we want to see hold. I think below there is not good. Um, yeah, that, that's what I want to see hold. Should be equivalent with, uh, will we fib it from all the way down here? I mean, we could. Okay, so there you go. Right, right at the equilibrium, that's fine. And if you fibbed it from here, which is probably even more accurate, you'll be right around the 6.18 at uh, 28.5. Okay, excuse me, uh, give me one second. So, plan for BTC, be patient. Uh, you know, you could trade locally in here and you can look for a sweep here, uh, but ultimately looking for 28.2 to 28.5-ish, uh, and I would play that to 32.4. Uh, if we do run 32.4, it's tough to say what to do from there. Uh, that'll probably be a new video. Uh, if we do start pushing up, in my opinion, I see uh, this whole inefficiency being filled uh, and I would be looking towards 37 ish that's uh, that would be my target if we were to move up through this inefficient action here right it's typically how it goes it's typically just okay price is pumping 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 oh, okay there's your first support before the major move down uh, that's the inefficiency filled and that would get you towards around 37 uh, if you go down to a daily you can maybe refine it even more yeah, you'll, you'll see a little something in here. You'll probably see a little resistance, but eventually probably pushes through. Yeah, maybe even 37.5. Um, but yeah, this this stuff is not really on my radar just yet. I'm just, you know, for the people who always ask long-term and stuff, there you go. Uh, if we were to start moving into that inefficiency, so be it. But first thing I'd be looking for is for a sweep of this and any type of reclaim to go retest areas lower. Um, okay. Moving into Ethereum. Uh, oh, the replay tool's on. Exit, yep. Um, clear this off. Weekly. Sweep down here. Okay, so there's your sweep. Uh, you also had, you had a low here, uh, and then you had a high here, right? So you had a low here, you had a high here. This is on the weekly. Uh, you deviate the low, you come back in, 
Um, and then we're looking for eventually this to be ran up here, the, the 2023 area. Um, you had a fair value gap on the way up that was completely disrespected. Uh, typically, that'll be served now as an inverse fair value, uh, provide bounce on the way up. If you want more confluence, you could go to the three month and you could say, okay, well, this is also the quarterly open. Quarterly open there. Uh, let's just get rid of some of this stuff. Okay, so quarterly open confluent with the inverse fair value. Um, you know, off the floor, I think, uh, I think F went up about 19% and BTC went up about like 27% or something. So F does have some catching up to do. Um, you know, perhaps into here uh, and start moving up. Uh, whether we get all the way up into here yet, I'm not sure. Uh, but that would be the general game plan. Maybe, you know, a, a, a TP1 here in this consolidation. Target 1, 1980s. Um, okay. Yeah, that's about it for Ath. I mean, I wouldn't expect it to retrace all the way back down below here. I think that would be pretty bad. So if you were looking for invalidation, you would say, okay, anywhere within this leg, you're trying to get long for higher. Uh, and invalidation should be simply below sort of this consolidation here. Um, yes. Uh, yes was nice today. Um, I didn't catch anything. I wanted to catch uh, this liquidity being ran, but it mostly just held bearish structure outside of this little sweep right here. Um, so I didn't get a fill there. And then I had went and got lunch and took a shower and whatnot around here and I missed this, which was a pretty easy trade to be honest. Um, sweep of liquidity here, right? This is more just educational. Uh, sweep of liquidity, uh, breakdown, displacement, right? Also you can see market structure break, high, low, higher high, break in market structure here. So you would have a break, again, entry techniques, right? You could have a market structure break retest. You could have a fair value gap in here. Uh, there was a couple different ways to play that and it would have worked out. And where would you target? These equal lows, liquidity. Comes to the fair value gap, all the way down, straight to liquidity, easy enough, okay? Um, so yeah, missed, missed all this, because I, I really, this was what I wanted and uh, didn't catch it because I was out. And uh, that's that. Well, not even out, but just away from the computer. Uh, as far as ES goes, um, you know, for some reason, just clear this off a little bit. This is the daily fair value. Um, might get a bounce off of the off of the low of the daily fair value. That's fine. Uh, for some reason, I think that this is where I want to be a buyer. Um, 43.51, right below this liquidity here. Um, I can't explain to you exactly why. Um, I think what it is is that lately I've felt like my orders have been a bit more aggressive than they need to be. Um, I think there was a there was a time. Um, I think it was like a month ago or a month and a half ago where I was getting front run and missing a lot of orders. Um, and then I sort of adjusted to that a little bit and I think I over adjusted and then orders started flying past me. So I was getting a fill, but I was, you know, having 0.3, 0 0.5 R of drawdown before it was going to target, uh, which just means that I can improve overall and improve my entries and whatnot. So um, playing it a little more uh, a little more greedy, so to say. So, you know, this, this is inefficient action right here, right? This could very well just bounce off of here somewhere. Uh, but for some reason, I just feel like we want more liquidity. And uh, that's more just a gut thing, right? You know, sometimes your gut's going to tell you certain things. And uh, I think if we really wanted to, like, wipe out all this or something, that it might not be from here. It might be something like, you know, tag the bottom of this, come maybe take that, back down, sweep that. Oh, no. Uh, how did I have it? Yeah, a little bit of that. Come up, boom, sweep that. Sweep that like that. And then maybe wipe out some of this. And then maybe, I'm not sure from there. Maybe consolidate and go a little higher and then continue lower. Uh, yeah, I guess that's 
gut at the moment, but it's crazy to draw that far out, to be honest. I'm just sort of spitballing now. Um, but yeah, you know, shout out to Prime XBT for sponsoring these videos. You could trade ES over there under the ticker SP500. You could also trade crypto. Um, again, you know, if you haven't liked and retweet, uh, I really appreciate that. I try to get the content out there to more people. Um, in the description, you could find uh, affiliate links if you're looking to trade uh, Prime XBT, Bybit, all that in there. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace out.